guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. For those of you that don't know, I fix appliances for a living and I do a lot of HVAC work as well. On quite a few of my calls, I have to deal with thermostats, mainly programmable thermostats, so I thought I would make a video of how a programmable thermostat works and how to program one. So here is my Honeywell programmable thermostat, and most programmable thermostats, regardless of the brand, this digital style will have the same features for the most part. So it'll have a set day schedule button, it'll have a fan setting, there's only two fan settings, there's auto and there's on. On means that your fan will literally be running 24-7, whereas auto means that your fan will turn on with the furnace and turn off with the furnace. So some people like to keep their fan on all the time just to circulate the air, that helps especially if you have multiple levels like a two or three story house. That helps mix the basement and upstairs temperatures so you don't have that much of a temperature swing. Like it's 10 degrees hotter upstairs and 10 degrees colder downstairs. And then you have the system button, which is usually just three settings. There's off, cool, and heat. And if you have a heat pump, you're also gonna have emergency heat. I do not have a heat pump, so mine only has three settings like that. Emergency heat means that your gas furnace would turn on whereas heat is for the heat pump or the unit that's outside. And my thermostat also has a more button right here and that just applies to the Wi-Fi. Right here you'll see it says check user guide. It just kind of keeps blinking on and off but I don't use Wi-Fi on my thermostat See, so it says connection failure therefore I don't use that button. And most thermostats I see will not have Wi-Fi or this more button. Most programmable thermostats unless you have like a Nest or a carrier infinity, etc. They will be pretty standard. They won't have Wi-Fi. It'll just be the programming. And of course, the up and down arrows adjust the temperature and hold. I'll explain what hold does in a little bit here. Before we continue, let's pull this thermostat off the wall. If you're not sure how your thermostat pulls off, usually a lot of them will just pull straight off. Typically the bottom will come off first and then the top. Some of them will have screws that come into the thermostat, but most of them will just come off like this. And as you can see, my thermostat just went blank when I pulled it off the wall. And that is because my thermostat does not have backup batteries. I get a lot of calls, especially during the winter, where people that have a thermostat like this without the backup batteries, uh, they'll have a power outage and their thermostat will come back on. And whenever you have a power outage and your thermostat goes blank like this, all the programming or the schedule that you have set up will get reset and also your time and date will be messed up as well. But if you do have batteries, make sure you don't forget to replace them every two years or so. And a lot of thermostats will have a low battery symbol that'll appear when the battery is low, but sometimes even before that symbol appears, your thermostat starts acting goofy. And while we have the thermostat off the wall, I'll just briefly explain what these wires are. The green wire, which usually goes to G, is the fan. G stands for fan. W, which is typically a white wire, is heating. That goes to W. Then common is usually either a brown or a blue wire. That is labeled as C. And then the yellow wire is cooling, and that usually goes to Y. And then you got the red wire, which goes to R. And then if you have RC, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but between R and RC, there's a little jumper. A lot of times I go to houses where people replace their own thermostat, and they forget to put this little jumper in between R and RC. RC is power for cooling. R is power, RC is power for cooling. So if you don't put a jumper in between that, you're not gonna have power to cooling and your AC will not turn on. And then all these wires will go into a thicker insulator wire like this right here. I don't know if you can see that, just you could pull it out of the wall. Usually there's some slack where you could pull it out. And then this thicker wire goes all the way down into your furnace and typically into a control board. And the control board will also have a strip like this or similar to this that'll be labeled with the same letters, you know, W, R, C. Also, if you bought a new thermostat, I would recommend reading the owner's manual because some thermostats require a C wire or a common and not all thermostat bases will have that C wire going to the thermostat. For example, on mine, it clearly states right on the base that it will not operate without wire going to C or common. And just two more things I wanna quickly point out. Uh, there's usually an up arrow they are directional, so make sure that your base is pointing up wherever the arrow is. And also, if you notice the screw holes, one is horizontal and one is vertical. The vertical one is your leveling screw. So if you put on your thermostat and it seems like it's a little lopsided, 
You can take the thermostat back off, loosen the screw, and you can move this base around to help level that thermostat. All right, let's put the thermostat back on the same way we took it off. So top in first, and that plugs right in. And since my thermostat gets its power directly from the furnace, it took it like four or five seconds to finally light up. So anyways, the first thing that pops out is this. And if you have a power outage, you're going to get a similar screen. If I press done, that'll just skip everything and go back to normal. And by normal, I mean the default settings of the thermostat, not what you had it set to. So to program your thermostat, you would hit the set clock day schedule button, which brings you to this screen right here. First, you got to set your clock. Usually if you press and hold, the time will skip faster as you can see right there. Right now it's 6.15 at my house. So we go to 6.15. And keep in mind that PM and AM does matter. So make sure you select the right one. So after you set the clock, you hit set day. Right now it's Tuesday. If you want, you can scroll through. There's all your days right there. So we select Tuesday. Next we would hit set schedule. By the way, a lot of thermostats, instead of uh, these individual buttons, they're just going to have a next button, like you see on mine right here. So you would set the time, press next, set the day, press next, and so on. As you can see, right now we're setting the schedule for the cool setting. A lot of people mess that up too. Uh, they think they're setting their AC, for example, AC schedule, but they're actually setting their heating schedule for their furnace. So they hit run program. And their thermostat just keeps using the default setting for the AC because all they programmed is the heating. But anyways, right now we're programming the cooling. First you set the time. And just so you know, all programmable thermostats have four periods. They have a wake up period, go to work period, come back from work period, and go to sleep period. So you can set your thermostat to switch temperatures four times a day. So right now we're in the wake up period. So let's just go through and program this for example purposes. Let's say I wake up at 6.30 to get ready for work. I pick 6.30 for Monday, wake up, and I hit next. Then I get to set the cool setting. Let's say by the time I wake up, I want the house to be 71 degrees. Then this is leave to work time. Let's say I leave to work at 7.30. But my wife leaves at 9, so actually let's set this to 9. And as you can see, this is PM. It's very easy to miss. So you actually want to keep scrolling until you get 9 AM, which is what we want since this is still the morning. So we select 9 AM, hit next. When my wife leaves to work, we want this to be 70, let's say 5. And that's going to be 75 for the whole day. And this is the return from work time. So let's say we come home at 4.30. So at 4, I will want the AC to turn on and start cooling the house back down to, let's say, back down to 72 degrees. So by the time we're home, this is hopefully going to be close to 72 degrees. Unless it's very hot outside, then you probably don't want to be doing a big temperature swing anyway. Because then your AC will have a hard time catching up. So at 4 p.m. it goes to 72, then we have to go to sleep time. Let's say we go to sleep at 10.30 p.m. When we go to sleep, we like it colder. So let's say we set our thermostat to 68 when we go to sleep. Then you hit next, and now we have Tuesday. You go through the whole thing again, wake up, leave, return, sleep, next, Wednesday. You go through all the days like that, and you program each day. And some thermostats, instead of having individual days, they'll have Monday through Friday, the work week, and then you can schedule Saturday and Sunday individually. So Monday through Friday, you schedule as a set. So you only set the four temperatures for the whole entire week, Monday through Friday. On my thermostat, I can set each day individually. Then after you're all done setting your schedule up, you just hit done. And now your thermostat is successfully programmed. And a lot of thermostats will have a run button on mine, I only have hold and then this button right here, but run just means run program. And the reason for that button is because we also have a hold button. So the way that works is, for example, let's turn on our cooling. Um, let's say the cooling, the program 
demands 72 degrees and I come home and I am just very cold, uh, let's say I want 77. If I hit 77, what will happen is it'll stay on 77 until the next time period. So if my go to sleep time is 11.30, at 11.30 the thermostat will automatically revert back to the temperature that is programmed. And a lot of thermostats will say temporary right on top here. Now if you like the classic thermostat where you can control the thermostat without any programming interfering, all you gotta do is set a temperature and press hold. And you should see somewhere on the screen it should say hold. If it says hold, that will override any programming that this thermostat has. So if you have a programmable thermostat and you absolutely hate it, you would like to just go back to the days of only using the arrows, very simple to do. You set it to cooling or to heating, whatever you're using. You select your temperature and you press hold. As long as you see hold, that will override any programming and it'll just keep that temperature all the time. Unless of course you have a power outage, in that case it'll revert back to the program and you would have to hit hold again. And that is all I had about a programmable thermostat. I hope you got something out of this. If you have further questions about programming your thermostat or anything thermostat related, let me know in the comments below. Or if you have something to add, we also love to hear from you as well. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time.